Okay, um, I understand that you started off with a karate background. Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, I did karate about seven years old over in Kilburn. Yeah. Um, I was born in London. What style of karate was that? Yeah, it was Shotokan. I yep. did that for about a year in London, then I, I moved to Nottingham, and yep. then I did it for about two years, so. Um, you know, it was something that was interesting and it was my introduction to the martial arts. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm a big fan, I'm a big fan of karate. Uh, uh, karate and traditional jiu-jitsu, um, some of the old uh, Japanese rise uh, schools, I can list them all, but there's, there's a lot. I mean, no one's really interested, but yeah, I, had a, I was really passionate about the historical arts, the sword arts, the, the espionage aspect to, to a lot of the, the clans in Japan and stuff. I, I was, I'm sort of like an, I was into more into the mystical side of the martial arts before wow. the fighting passion came. Yeah, it seems that traditional martial arts are making a bit of a comeback yeah. in uh, in MMA. Yeah. Um, do you feel that's something that's uh, sort of like important? I think it is very important to stay close to the roots because I'm, I'm a martial artist and I like the guys like, uh, I like the Jiu Jitsu guys, the, the BJJ guys and I like uh, the, uh, the guys like the Cheetah, the guys that, that have, it's, it's still martial arts, they still practice their, their martial arts, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I'm not too keen on it being, becoming too much of a sport where you, even though Rory McDonald's a great guy, you know, um, and a tremendous MMA fighter, I'm not, I don't want it to, like, for me, MMA is more of a, a sport. I still, when it first started, you know, it was kickboxing versus jiu-jitsu and that, I want to, them to keep the, the, the martial arts sort of aspect yep. of it without it becoming too commercial. Yeah, you know, so makes get sense. Belts and, I, don't know, just, I don't want it to become too commercialised like WWE. Or something. Can you remember the first time you ever experienced MMA and um, sort of what sort of passions it kind of uh, evoked in you? Well, I watched it yeah, on one of the first UFC tapes and I thought, OK, this is really interesting, really cool. And then, unfortunately enough, uh, the first amateur MMA competition was held, held in Nottingham, right. my hometown. KSTO was the first MMA competition in the UK. Uh, there was no headshots at the time, but you could punch, kick, and you could do jiu-jitsu. Did you take um, part? Yeah, I you took did, part yeah. in two of them. James Zikic, uh, Michael Bisping, uh, Dan Hardy, myself, Paul McVeigh, the Butlins, basically every uh, Lee Remedios, Mark Weir, like all the, the, the names in MMA. Yeah started on this KSPO circuit so um, I was fortunate it was practically on my doorstep so when I did find MMA I didn't have too far to go to sort of like get involved in the sport straight away I just had to go to the local leisure centre mm -hmm. so it's sort of destined as such you might sort of say but I was fortunate. And, uh, how do you see the growth of uh, MMA in the UK has it surprised you at all? Uh, not really because you know we have a big uh, boxing community, and, mm -hmm. you know, we like combat sports, we're very passionate about combat sports as a nation, so uh, the growth is, has not surprised me, plus with the UFC's marketing power, they can practically go to any market anywhere and just flood the market so much that even if they're not successful there, whatever whatever they do, the impact they do have can, can continue, you know what I mean, they still grow for MMA, even if they're not successful yep. commercially with their shows and stuff. So, uh, no, I'm not really too surprised. But how important is it for you to, to kind of deal with fans? Uh, very important because I, I am a fan and I am a, a people person, you know, mm -hmm. I'm very passionate about uh, you know, shedding any stigmas between any, anybody, um, about anybody. I just, I, I'm very big at interacting. I've, I've always been fortunate enough to meet lots of different type of people. I was born in London, so I'm, I'm a bit of a city boy, then I moved to Nottingham, and that's a completely different environment. Then I was in the army, so I got to see lots of different people then. Uh, I had MMA, it's taken me all around the world, so I'm, I'm very, I'm very much a people person. I can get on with anybody, and I love, I love being able to, to interact with different characters yeah. and see what sort of uh, knowledge and experiences you can exchange and learn from. It's just a, you know, I'm a cultural person. <laughs> How much longer do you think you've got left in MMA? Any idea? Um, 
I don't want to. I don't want to be in the sport if I'm not enjoying it. Basically, right. I'm enjoying it at the moment. I'm loving it. I'm, I'm looking forward to a very big year. Um, I'm very. I'm going to do things 100 percent this year. I'm looking to make a massive impact, and then uh, we'll see what next year brings. I don't want to look too far into the future, but um, you know, this is my career. This is my life. Everything that I do is involved in the martial arts, and I've got a lot of plans. Um, uh, and expectations as a fighter and on the business side of things giving yep. back to the sport and you know helping in its growth and stuff and just uh, you know living off something that's sort of providing me in my life and yep. martial arts in my life and I want to be able to to continue doing that and giving other people the opportunity to do that as well. So do you think coaching will be uh, prominent in your future? I'll, I'll, I'm going to coach most definitely. I will open a gym, I'll continue uh, promoting, I'll continue doing clothing and sponsoring fighters and doing as much as I can um, just to keep people involved, not just in MMA but in the martial arts as well. And you'll, you'll see that with the way I do things like a lot of the MMA guys will have team death clutch or whatever when they get coaching staff my, my uh, MMA team is called the Spirit Dojo um, yep. you know I still call my even though my class is MMA and Thai boxing I still call it a dojo and, you know, I, um, I couldn't say the name Japanese because I probably wouldn't get anybody there but uh, uh, Spirit I wanted to have the Spirit in because I like the, the Japanese uh, writing there. Yep. You know, it, it means a lot if you're, if you're into the old school martial arts. So, yeah. I don't just want to be someone who's going to have ropes hanging from the ceiling, loads of weights and stuff in the gym. I want no. to be a dojo and you yeah. know, carry the, the sport forward and the martial arts forward. Oh, and that's what I mean about the sport becoming too commercial. Yeah. And you're saying that the old martial arts are dying out and, and they all are struggling to compete with them. And it's true. I used to, and I'm even going to admit, I used to buy Martial Arts Illustrated Combat Magazine all the time. I I've probably bought one in about 10 years, and now I'm only buying fighting there in uh, you know your MMA magazines, and, and I think that's apart from from the from the, the guys that are making a living from the traditional martial arts and their community and their students and stuff. I think that's the way it's gone. Yeah, that's what I'm saying about it becoming too commercialised, and that's why I'm trying to you know keep keep a little uh, a bit of that martial arts when I. Even though I'm an MMA fighter, I still yep. want to you know, represent Spirit Dojo and whatever.